Hi, I'm Jeff Greenberg. And I'm Rich Harrington. And today, I want to talk a little bit about targeting and patching. And it's really easy to screw these up because Premiere Pro is not exactly consistent on what you have to do, depending on the task at hand. Uh, and in this case, I wouldn't say it's necessarily intuitive either. Yeah. So let's start easy, and then we're going to step up to other more advanced editing. I've got one shot, and I want to put this shot into my timeline. So to do that, notice a couple of things. First off, I've targeted that I want to take the video, and I've lined that up with video one, and I've got the audio lined up with audio one. And if I make an edit here, I want you to see that it's not going to work exactly right because we didn't select this track. So just because we've patched it in, I need to make sure that that track is actually selected. Otherwise, it's going to put in filler. The way I like to often describe this and look at it is the tiny little V on the left side represents what my sources are. The tiny little A1 is also my source. They're being patched to my main important story, my sequence, V1 or video one and audio one. And it's a really important thing to keep in mind that these two connect together. For example, if I wanted to put this video up on V2, I would end up going ahead here and taking it, yeah. let's take a different clip here. Yeah, we'll just go into the reaction shot and the cutaway. And here's our subject walking in. Hey, Joan, I'm Skip, and I'll be your doctor. And we'll just line that up. Now, again, if we were to just say overwrite, we would be destroying what's on the V1 track. You can see that because video one was actually live, we ended up losing what was on video one. Let's just do a quick undo, and let's untarget that track. Now it comes in in place. Notice the audio came in place as well. We've damaged our audio on audio one. Once again, let's do an undo. So in this case, we, what we want to do is either add a track and patch to it, or we want to tell it not to come across at all. Let's first see what it looks like if we want that audio. So if I add a track, I could say no new video tracks, but one audio track afterwards. And I'll use the new standard track type that allows me to mix either mono or stereo files. In this case, it's DSLR audio. So we line that up, we've gone ahead and patched that here correctly, and I make sure that my target tracks are accurately declared. So I'm going to go ahead and just put video onto V2 and Audio 2. So now that we go ahead and do the overwrite edit, you see that it left those other clips behind. Now, you know, I like that, but th for this reaction shot, I really don't want that sound hey, from that shot. Skip. I really Why just want it? the piece of video, because it's a cutaway. Oh, I want to keep the scene. The, the real audio from the natural sound on A1. So let's do another undo here, and let's just tell it not to bring across the audio for A2 whatsoever. Yeah. Same, same goal here. We do an overwrite. Boom, it comes into place. And the beautiful part is it didn't bring across the audio. Now, where things get a little tricky is that these selections of tracks will also influence other editing commands. So for example, if I've marked an in and an out, and I decide that I want to go ahead and extract this area or lift this area, I say, oh great, I marked my in and out lift. Well, nothing happened. That's because I didn't have my tracks selected. One of the things that I find a little frustrating about Premiere Pro is that while it does this beautiful blue highlight on the timeline itself on V2, you can't really see that there's much of a highlight going on on V1 and A1. It's there, but boy, is it subtle. It's barely there. And, and this is where you have to decide. Some people will take a look at some of their preferences and they'll look at the label colors. And while these bright colors really do stand out, they might decide to back those off a little bit and let's go with a slightly less saturation there. And when you do that, you'll see that it's a little easier to see. But still not great. Not great. And so you kind of have to just look. And so in this case, when I say, oh, go ahead and extract, it closed those gaps. So it's important that you accurately select the tracks you want to do when doing that. And I think the biggest gotcha is this one. If I decide I wanted to copy and paste this. Oh yeah, with pasting, this is the worst. So I've copied that to my clipboard, or I cut that and I want to move it down the sequence. And I say, okay, I'm down here in my sequence. And, and let's just say that I didn't have video one selected. It was on video one, you know, and I cut it. You would think, oh, well, it was on video one. It'll just go to video one. No. <laughs> it goes to the lowest highlighted track. And since it's V2, it started 
with V2 and worked its way upwards. So you should just be aware for things like ins of inserting and overwriting, of lifting and extracting, of copying and pasting. These, these highlights can really make or break how easy of an experience you have in Premiere Pro. And of course, we would like to think that this was the end of this not making sense, except you might take a look at commands like the automate to sequence command. Oh. And I've got my clip selected and we'll explore this command in another movie. Say, oh, this is great. I've got these four clips. I know exactly where they want. I've targeted video track two. I click automate to sequence and I click OK. Automate Surprise. to sequence always goes to V1. And if you don't want it to go to V1, then you actually have to lock the track before you invoke it. And then it will go to the next unlocked track. So, the user interface folks out there that control this need to get together and get a couple of engineers in the same room and say, could we be consistent? And, and to make things worse, knowing which tracks selected also affects things like transitions and trimming. So don't just blow past, past this and say, I got this. Spend some time, experiment, get really precise, and if you need to, you can adjust some of the keyboard shortcuts to speed this up. Uh, this is totally mappable from the keyboard. If you're a Final Cut user, you might have known something like this to be auto selection. If you're an avid user, this is just track highlighting, and definitely think if you're somebody who's real keyboard strong of adding this to your keyboard.